Over the years, there have been many spiritual giants who've walked this earth with heartfelt humility. They have spoken and acted with sensitivity and concern for all beings without bias. Sri Swami Satchidananda was one such spiritual giant. When Swami Satchidananda first arrived in the West in 1966, the youth of America was in need, and he gave them direction, a sense of hope, and the spirit of aspiration. The organizers of the Woodstock Music and Arts Festival expected less than 50,000 people to turn up. But when they saw almost half a million arriving, they became worried and had to act fast. Michael Lang, the main festival organizer, called his friend the artist Peter Max and asked him who he thought should open the festival. Peter Max answered without hesitation, Get Swami Satchidananda. The artist Peter Max was part of the 60s hippie culture and is famous for using the bright colors in his work. Peter was one of those responsible for bringing Swami Satchidananda, or Swamiji as he's known to his followers, to the West. Swami Satchidananda was teaching at his yoga center on the west side of Manhattan when he received the call from Peter Max to say he was needed in Sullivan County and a car had been sent to pick him up. So the journey to Woodstock began. But because of the extraordinary amount of traffic, with tailbacks as long as 30 miles, Swami Satchidananda's car had to stop well short of the festival gates. And the decision was made to call for a helicopter to fly him the last few miles into Woodstock. While they waited at the roadside for the helicopter to arrive, a young man, presumably suffering from dehydration, came to Swamiji's attention he instinctively offered to help him. When the helicopter finally arrived, Swamiji was accompanied by a folk singer, Tim Harding composer of the top 40 hit, If I Were a Carpenter, and two of his musicians.
upon arrival backstage, he was greeted by a group of hippies, clearly happy to see him. And the organizer, Michael Lang and Artie Cornfield. also met some of the performers due to appear at the festival, including Richie Havens, Ravi Shankar, Joan Baez, and Arlo Guthrie. Richie Havens went on stage first to get everyone into the music groove before Swami Satyarananda was called to give his opening address. When he did, it set the mood for a historic three days of peace and music. for having given this opportunity of opening this great, great music festival. I should have come a little earlier to do that job, but as you all know, still thousands of brothers and sisters are on the way, and it is not that easy to reach you. America leads the whole world in several ways. Very recently when I was in the East, the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi met me and asked me what's happening in America. And I said, America is becoming a whole. America is helping everybody in the material field, but the time has come for America to help the whole world with spirituality also. And that's why, from the length and breadth, we see people, thousands and thousands of people, yoga-minded, spiritual-minded. The whole of last month, I was in Hawaii and the West Coast, and I witnessed it again. So let all our actions and all our arts express yoga through the sacred art of music, let us find peace that will pervade all over the globe. Often we hear groups of people shouting that we are going to fight for peace. I still do not understand how they are going to fight and then find the peace. <laughs> the
therefore let us not fight for peace but let us find peace within ourselves first and the future of the whole world is in your hands you can make or break but you are ready here to make the world and not to break here the east has come into west the entire world is going to watch this the entire world is going to know that what the american youth can do to the humanity so every one of you should be responsible for the success of this festival Author Philip Goldberg commented, Swami Sachidananda's opening invocation at Woodstock, witnessed by nearly half a million youngsters and seen in part in the Oscar-winning documentary about the mud and acid-soaked weekend, accelerated the public awareness of India's heritage of inner exploration. While some of the values that Woodstock was said to embody may have faded after the festival, The embrace of yoga and eastern spirituality has grown stronger, changing the way we understand and practice religion, the way we take care of our minds, and the way we contemplate our place in the cosmos. And the future of the whole world is in your hands. Today, more people than ever meditate, chant mantras, and embrace healthier lifestyle choices. In large part, the seeds planted during Woodstock have taken root and also hold the promise of what could be if we could only get ourselves back to the garden.